there. It is Saturday, November 26th, and it is time to play some weekly daily word games. Um, hope you all had, if you're in the U.S., had a lovely Thanksgiving weekend. Uh, mine was nice. It was low key. Got to see my brother and his wife. Um, and in fact, we did a couple of collaborative videos, uh, one on his channel and one on mine, which I will link to in the description below. So if you haven't checked those out, you get to see us, uh, on the same camera in the same room with a familiar background. <laughs> we did it at, in my office because uh, he came up here because most of our family is here in LA. And it was very nice to get together with family and just, it was very relaxed and easygoing and uh, food was delicious. So anyway, that's what I wish for all of you is comfortable family gatherings where everybody's happy to see each other. I'm very fortunate in that respect that we all enjoy each other's company. So <laughs> Um, that's all I got. Uh, hope you all are having a lovely end of November into the holiday season. They were playing Christmas music in Bones this morning when I went to buy some milk and stuff. So I guess it is upon us. I also saw several cars with Christmas trees on the roofs. So I, being Jewish, have had mixed feelings about the holiday season over time, but I have come to really appreciate the, the sentiment of it. Um, the the idea of, of joy being you know high on the list of of feelings of kindness toward each other and lights and certainly in Judaism we have with Hanukkah is is the festival of lights it's all about bringing light into the darkest time of year when we have long nights and short days and so I think we can share that among all religions I think most religions have a tradition of holidays that. Uh, employ the idea of bringing light into the darkness during the winter time. So can't be can't be upset about that at all. Um, so with that said, um, if you are feeling generous this holiday season, you can join my Patreon. Uh, welcome to my new patrons. Uh, I appreciate all of you so very much. It shows the the faith you have in me <laughs> as a YouTuber and the fact that you want to support me, I nothing but grateful for all of your support, even everyone who watches my videos, all of my subscribers. By the way, double check that you're subscribed sometimes. And I've noticed this with a few of the YouTubers I watch. You realize you watch them all the time. You get them in your recommendeds all the time, but you're not actually subscribed. So if you're not, uh, hit that big red button. Um, I reached 890 this weekend. Thanks. No, I'm sure in no small part to <laughs> my video over on uh, Rank's channel. So if you're here from there, welcome. Happy to see you here. Very glad to welcome new subscribers. Uh, apparently, a lot of people did not know that we are brother and sister. So yeah, that's not a secret. Um, I mod his streams. Uh, and um, I also stream on Sunday afternoons, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern. That's, uh, I believe it's 10 p.m. in the UK. So I know that's not a great time for people in Europe and uh, Asia, but it's the best I got. So hope to see you there. We play GeoGuessr uh, for two hours. We get custom maps from viewers, which you can feel free to submit a custom map if you'd like me to play one of yours. Uh, there is a form in the description where you can do that. So I think that's all I got. Uh, don't forget to like this video. That tells the algorithm to show it to more people. And the more people that see my stuff, the more subscribers I get, getting closer and closer to a thousand. Uh, my new goal is a thousand by the end of the year. I think we can do it. All right, let's get started. Today, we are going to play Wordle Peaks, Quartle, Symbol, not Wordle, and the new game that I played for the first time with Ranks on Thursday, Crystal Crossle, which I really, really enjoyed. So let's get started. Wordle Peaks. Now, I don't have a starting word from anybody for Wordle Peaks, and normally I start with Quartle, but I felt like starting with Wordle Peaks today, and then I will use the Wordle Peaks answer to start Quartle. So I think we can still do thank. We're still sort of in Thanksgiving weekend here. Ah, turned out T was a good starting letter after all. Usually wouldn't think it is. A certainly is not a great one to start with in the first word, but you never know. Sometimes there's an A. Um, what are we thinking here? TR maybe? About Oh, it's going to do treat, but uh, oh, tread is good, though. No. Okay. T-O, maybe? Let's see. What do we end in? 
E maybe? Uh, what torch actually? No, see. Yeah, torch is good. Okay. Must be an I then. <laughs> you don't really, not a lot of words starting with TK or TL. Uh, all right, TI. Gotta end in E then, right? Uh, probably. Tinge. Yeah, that's a tough word. Tinge is a weird word. All right, that was a decent solve. I'm okay with that. Four is good. And we will start Quartal with Tinge. Not too bad. I've been playing Quartal like this. I've been picking a starting word and then just kind of hard moding it from there. Not necessarily hard moding exactly, but then just going with it instead of three starting words. And I didn't get any suggestions. So, by the way, feel free to suggest starting words for Quartal. I like a three word start that are thematic in some way, either related to. A holiday coming up or something in your own life. Um, surprisingly, nobody suggested any World Cup themed ones, so you can feel free to do that if you like. Uh, but, you know, with a decent spread of letters, 10 to 15 unique letters among the three words would be good. But since I didn't get any, I get to pick. <laughs> uh, just You can just drop those in a comment. I keep a, a local spreadsheet with all the suggestions so I don't forget anybody. Um, I'm looking at that top right word thinking it should be able to be guessable. Something like dance would fit. I'm going to try that. Ooh, look at that. Good guess. And that helped me with the bottom right word. Okay, I just got a warning that my battery is low, but my computer is supposed to be plugged in. Give me one second. <laughs> okay, I am back. Sorry about that. That was crazy. My computer got unplugged somehow. All right, everything's fine. I'm plugged in. We're ready to go. No no crashing in the middle of uh, recording. We wouldn't want that. Where was I? I know it was no time for you, but it was a couple of minutes for me. Um, right, bottom right. I've got an I and a C and an A, so that feels pretty gettable. Circa, I'm seeing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. That top left word is uh, holding out on me here. It has a T, but doesn't start with T. I mean, South would fit, and it would give me a bunch of new vowels. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Not a bad guess. Quoth? Yep. And... Do I have all the letters? T-A-C? Yeah, I do. Coast? No, it doesn't start with C. What does it start with? O? What is this word? Somebody help me. Oh, it could start with A. That would make more sense. Ascot. <laughs> Who knew Ascot was, was an anagram of coast? All right, then. That was a good solve. I am very pleased with that. Look, I had three guesses left. Did I only have... I only had one guess that wasn't an answer. Besides the first word. Wow. I will take it. All right, so let's start symbol with Ascot. Why not? You love to see it. All right, so we have options here. Um, either the purples are yellow or the suns are yellow. I don't think either one is green because those would be weird. Uh, weird patterns. So I gotta check one of them. I'm going to try starting with T. Maybe S, actually. How do I decide whether the purple or the orange is gray? I tend to assume the one with fewer is the yellow. All right, stop being indecisive and pick something, Jessica. Let's start with S. How about... um? Actually, you know what I like is clock. That's very interesting. Let's 
So I think I'm right. I think now that the moons are green. And the fourth letter is either K or L. So choke. <laughs> okay. It was choke. <laughs> I'm very pleased with that. That went quite well. I, that was a lucky guess. I mean, I was all ready to start with S, but it wasn't. I'm glad I didn't. Cool. All right. We're going to move on to not wordle. Um, choke is not a great word to start not wordle with, but we have rules around here. Score is too high. That doesn't surprise me. Go towards Z. That also doesn't surprise me. Too common maybe surprises me a little bit. We have one yellow, though. So I'm going to jump forward in the alphabet to what P. Let's try punch. That reuses, oh no, that uses too many letters from choke. Pouty? Pouty uses the O in a new spot and has otherwise new letters and is later in the alphabet. Let's do it. Nice. Okay, score is still too high. Go toward A, but I have two letters in place. So that makes me wonder if it does start with P-O. I don't know what it would be, though. Pound? Pound would work, actually. Tempted to try that, just... Oh, no, that would be three greens. Silly me. P-O-R something? Nah. I'm going to keep the O and the Y. I'm going to try an O-Y word. Earlier, like mommy. I thought maybe too many. That's way too many points. Uh, lofty? That's too many greens and also too many points. Wow. Okay. It, I think maybe the Y, because Y is four points. So even if I have one point letters, that's already eight points. Uh... Did like maybe OU and actually just maybe if I keep the OU and do something like pound mound. Actually, mound is good. I'm gonna do that. Interesting, it was not OU. Okay. Score too high still. Go towards Z. That is strange. I wonder if it ends in TY then. It's gonna be really tough to get fewer than eight points if the Y is involved. In fact, it's going to be impossible, so there's no Y. So maybe it does start with P and it's a seven point word? Pinto? Pinto has two greens in pouty and two yellows in, I like it. Yes. I'm very pleased with that solve. That felt really good. That felt really solid. Okay, so now we're going to move on to Chris Crossel, Crystal Crossel, and I will start with Pinto, but I'm going to explain how it works. Because I, I, I get the feeling that people don't quite understand it, and I only just sort of understand, I understand it, and I think I can explain it in a different way. So I'm going to put the word in so I can explain. So you are guessing one word, not two. You're guessing a word just like in Wordle, um, and that's on the left. That's your guesses on the left. On the right, apparently it has a set of blue words. So each guess, everyone gets the same blue word with each guess. Now, the colors in your guess may refer to the answer word and or to the blue word. So for example, my word Pinto and their word Peril, it's almost like it's almost like the blue words are trying to mislead you. You can kind of think of it as some of these might be lying to you. So for example, this green P, well, there's a P in that position in the word peril. So it may just be that it's saying, yeah, there's a green P because the word is peril. Only the word isn't peril. So I can't trust this P. I, there may not be a P in the word at all. This yellow I, same thing. There's an I in the word peril. And so this yellow I may be referring to that I and there may not be an I in the actual answer at all. Now, N and O are gray. That means we know there's no N or O because there's no N or O in the blue word. There's no N or O in the answer word either. 
And this T here, there's no T in the word peril and this T is yellow. So there is a T in the answer word, not in the fourth location. So what I wanna do first is check this I. I'm almost certain the P is not involved. Uh, that's too coincidental if it is. Um, so I'm gonna check the T. I'm gonna go ahead and start with T and I'm gonna do something like thick. So what that does, it tries the T in a new location, it checks the I again, and then it's new letters otherwise. Okay, so here we can be pretty confident. There's no I, so that I was only referring to the word peril. There is a T in the word because there's no T in bulge and we have a yellow T still. There's no H in bulge, so we know the second letter is definitely H. And there's no C in bulge, so we know there's a C in the real world. So I'm the real world. There's definitely a C in the real world, but also in the real word. I'm going to guess that this word starts with CH and then ends in T probably. So something like shoot would work. Okay, that's not the answer, but I was right about the CH because again, there's no C or H in Raven. Now there is an E in Raven. Oh, <clears throat> sorry. My throat always gets really scratchy while I'm talking here lately. I think the air is super dry here lately. I don't know why. Um, I knew there wasn't a T in the fourth position, so that actually wasn't a great guess. It probably does end in T. Now this E, here's the thing. There could be an E in the word. I'm thinking the word cheat fits really well, but it could also just be referring to the E in Raven. But I'm gonna try cheat because it looks too good to be not the answer. Oh, not quite. Okay. Here's a great, great example of how this works. Look at this. So we know there's no C in logger. There's no H in logger. We already knew the C and H were true. The E in logger is in the fourth position, but we got a green E in the third position. So we know that this E is true, that the, the word is C-H-E something T. This A, however, certainly refers to the A in logger. Otherwise, this word would be correct because where else could the A go? So I'm thinking chest is the answer. And there it is. All right, so you can see that was only the third time I played it and I got it got it in five last time I played as well. Um, ranks can I got it in seven. That was a tough word though. Um, so hopefully that helps you understand how it works. Um, people have been trying to explain it in lots of different ways and that was the way I think about it. I kind of think about it like I think about Fibble or something like that where it's trying to mislead you about what's true. So you have to think about whether, you kind of have to compare your guess to the ant, to the blue word in the sense of which letters can I not trust? So I couldn't trust the P and the I in Pinto because there were a P and an I in Peril, but I could trust the T because there's no T in Peril. So that's how that works. So hopefully that helps you understand it. I hope you enjoy the game. I, I'm really enjoying it. I like the, the variation on a theme that we get here. Um, and because I enjoy Fibble so much and it has that same sort of feeling of you can't trust all the clues. <laughs> Um, so that's it. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you have a great weekend. Shout out to my patrons as always, especially my Explorer tier patron, Shannon. And I will see you all next week for more weekly daily word games.